Hey everyone, I'm Declan Edwards, the founder of BU Coaching, a keynote speaker, published author, and confidence and purpose coach. Uh, I've just spent some amazing time with Prosper on the show, sharing some knowledge and value on how you can learn to live a life of thriving confidence and purpose, rather than just getting by in a life of self-doubt, stress, and anxiety. So make sure you tune in, check out the show, you're going to get amazing value from it. See you guys there. Welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Online Prosperity Show. And today I've brought you the business coach and personal experience coach, um, Dicklin. Dicklin, how are you doing, my man? Yeah, doing really well, man. Excited to be here again. Absolutely. Now, Dicklin is a keynote speaker and is the founder of BU Coaching. And it's an online company that actually empowers people and entrepreneurs to overcome self-doubt uh, so that they can cultivate self-confidence and live a life of purpose. Now, there's an interesting uh, statistic that we just discussed, uh, me and Dicklin, before the show right now, and it says that 97% of all businesses in Australia are small to medium businesses, and one in three of those entrepreneurs is actually clinically depressed. Now, most of the things that cause that is because we've got an unrealistic expectation of what you know the whole entrepreneurial game should be like. You know, we've got that self doubt. We don't have the self confidence when um, you know we're presented with the challenges of actually delivering our services or our products to our audience, and we are not really living a life full of purpose or exercising our passion. So um, that's the reason why I've brought Declan today because since 2015, Declan has spoken to a range of businesses, schools, and organizations on how people can actually overcome this self-doubt, cultivate self-confidence, um, and develop a sense of purpose and begin living a thriving life. Like you know, this show is designed to help you start scaling grow a business that you can be profitable and you can actually enjoy working in now. Dicklin, thank you so much for um, you know sparing the afternoon to have a bit of a chat um, with us pertaining to this subject that not a lot of people really talk about, about. Tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got started with BU Coaching, sir. Yeah, definitely. So uh, a lot of people are somewhat surprised when uh, they meet me and I tell them my story because it seems so different to who I am now, but I spent most of my life um, having very low self-confidence, very low self-esteem and really struggling with identity. Um, I was quite overweight for most of my life and I'm actually the first male um, in quite a while in a, you know, in a direct line of generations to not be in either the police force or the military. So I sort of you know, changed the direction of the family history a little bit. Um, and in doing so, I was really struggling within myself to figure out who I was and what I wanted for myself. I felt like I was always trying to live up to other people's expectations rather than setting the idea of this is who I am for me. And of course, with that came a lot of self-doubt and, and self-esteem struggles. And the result of this was at you know, 17 years old, I thought the reason I wasn't happy was because I was overweight. So I quickly lost weight, but did it in all the wrong ways. I uh, ended up with an eating disorder and lost 33 kilos in a year in the most unhealthy ways possible. And the wake up call came for me when the doctors were coming in running tests on me because they didn't know I had an eating disorder. I didn't tell anyone. And they said, we're going to test for bowel cancer. And I watched my mum, who basically raised me and was a big you know, inspiration in my life break down. Um, and I realized that my decisions, my actions, my behaviors weren't just negatively affecting me now. They were negatively affecting the people that I cared about the most. And as a result of that, I was fortunate enough to start working with amazing coaches myself. I've been lucky enough to work with coaches since I was 17, 18 years old. And through that, learned a lot about psychologically what makes people tick like what makes people go how come some people just get by in life and settle for a life of merely surviving and not fulfilling their potential and how come other people really step up and thrive and survive you know live this life of passion and purpose i wanted to know what made the difference in people especially within myself and the more i learned about that the more i studied nlp cognitive behavioral therapy positive psychology the more i fell in love with helping other people learn to live that life of confidence, purpose and fulfillment. And that's, I suppose that's how I got into BU. I got into this space where I was fortunate enough after years of working with coaches, and I still work with coaches myself today, um, being in a position to be able to give back. I do believe that knowledge is an absolute gift and 
it is our purpose and part of people's purpose as they acquire knowledge to give that back to other people as a gift and to help other people. You know, we like to say, take the journey and then use your wisdom from taking the journey to give back to others and lead the way. So it's, it's a very beautiful place for me to be at now where I'm very happy and fulfilled in who I am. I'm very confident in who I am. I'm able to speak in front of crowds and really positively impact other people's lives and I'm living a great life. But more importantly, I'm giving that back to other people as well and really helping them truly live that empowered, exceptional life that they were born to live. Absolutely. Thank you so much for relating that story right there. Because at the end of the day, like you've mentioned, we're here to live, we're here to learn, we're here to contribute. And yep. you seem to have done all of those and now you're living in a life of contribution. Now, just looking at your own history there, I mean, obviously you had all of those personal problems that you had to overcome and you also had societal expectations in the form of your family that was anticipating you could have just joined the forces or, um, you know, become part of what was used, um, you know, to be um, for you there. Do you think any of that motivated you to become who you are in as much as you had something to prove? Yeah, definitely. I think, um, I was talking to someone about this earlier today, actually, it's quite funny to look back on life at some of the hardest moments of my life and some of the biggest decisions I made and some of the, you know, most painful times I went through and be incredibly grateful for them. And to see now from where I'm sitting and where I am in life to be able to look back. And I love the Steve, Steve Jobs quote, you know, we can't connect the dots of life looking forward. We can only do it when we look backwards. And to be able to look back and go, yeah, 100%, you're right. Without those expectations, without those behaviors, without those decisions, without the person I was, I wouldn't be the person I am. So, yeah, I do credit a lot of my past to leading me to here. And, and I am very grateful for it, which is such a, if you asked me, geez, only three, four years ago, whether I'd be grateful for some of those painful times, I would have laughed at you and said, you're kidding. So to now, to now be in a place where I can genuinely say it is very beautiful. Absolutely. You help people thrive, um, you know, in, in, in their existence and also within their business. But half of the things that draw them back is exactly those things that are past experiences. Now, if somebody's really holding on to something that happened to them in the past and they think or still feel they were dealt a wrong card, how do you get, help them to get past that and actually have an anticipation of a brighter future for themselves? Yeah, so, well, a big part of it is, is shifting the meaning that's applied to the experience. So you're right, a lot of people get stuck in the past and we've all done it. We all go home and at the end of the day, we lie in bed and go, if I did this differently or did this better or should have, could have, would have, right? we run these stories to ourselves. But when we're focusing on trying to change the event, it's a dead end because we can't. We can't change the past as much as sometimes we'd like to. But what we can learn to change is the meaning we apply to what happened. And that's where the magic happens. I don't know if you've heard of the amazing book, um, Man's Search for Meaning by Viktor Frankl, who was an incredible um, psychotherapist who was taken in, in Auschwitz. He was... I'm Jewish. I imagine you've got it over there. Yes. Good man. Good book to right. have. Book it is a good book yes. to have. <laughs> yes. So yeah, you can relate very much when I talk about this and how he obviously went through horrible things that, that people shouldn't have to go through watching his loved ones, you know, be killed as, uh, in part of World War II. But again, when people ask if he changed it, he goes, no, A, because I can't, B, because it's led me to be the man I am today. But C, it's not about changing the past. It's changing our association with the past and what it means. So when we're able to do that, that is a, such a big change to go, well, hang on, the meaning isn't in the event, it's all in here, and this is within my power to change and influence, that is one of the best gifts that we can give to people is the tools and strategies and techniques to be able to carry that out. Absolutely. So, you know, in your own words right there, you're saying this is not something anyone can can make that shift all by themselves. They are going to need to have some sort of aids or some sort of um, you know transformatory tools. You've mentioned coaches before, um, you know earlier. How important is it to have somebody who is by your side, who actually maybe has gone through what you're going through, to aid you and actually assist you, um, you know, to go past? Because I think some other people might be. Uh, reluctant to that um, you know option because they don't want yet another person knowing what they're going through and you know if they knew how to get past that you know you know they would but they're you know putting themselves back by not actually um, you know confiding to somebody else how important is it to have either coaches or books 
that would help you, um, you know, go past that, um, you know, hurdle that you might be going through in life? Yeah. So I'll, I'll explain it in the way that one of my first coaches ever explained it to me. It was when I was first looking at working with coaches myself and I was the classic, you know, um, stubborn late teens male who thought he could do it all himself and was fiercely independent. And I had this idea that, um, if I didn't do it myself, was I really doing it properly? And, you know, thought that reaching out and asking for help would mean that I was broken or not good and needed fixing, which I now see isn't the case. I know a lot of people have the same struggles. I now see reaching out and asking for help is efficiency. It's rather than trying to reinvent the wheel, go find someone who's invented the wheel and work with them and learn quickly. You know, if you can learn what took them 30 years and you can learn that in three months with them, geez, you're ahead of the game. But at the time I was still stuck in that I have to do it myself. I have to be independent and it's weak for me to ask for help and get guidance. And my coach sat me down, who was, you know, the guy who became my coach. And at the time I was playing basketball and I loved basketball. And he said to me, okay, why does Michael Jordan have a basketball coach? And I said, what do you mean? He goes, well, he's one of the best players of all time. Why did he have a coach? Especially when his coach wasn't necessarily better than him at basketball. And I went, I don't know. And he goes, a few reasons. One, the coach keeps him accountable. It keeps him moving forward. It keeps him true to his word. Two, the coach can see things that Michael can't see. So the coach sees things that are unaware and I'll get points them out and then they can work on it. And three, the coach is there as a support. It's like having someone in your corner all the time, you know, same as boxers have the, the people in their corner to support them. They know there's always someone to lean back on. Because entrepreneurship can be a very lonely journey. So knowing that there's someone there helping and who's got your back mentally, emotionally, and physically is very encouraging. So for me, I was sitting there going, you know what, that, that makes sense. And then he delivered this line that I'll remember for the rest of my life. He said, Declan, when you care as much about your results in life as you do your results in basketball, you'll get a coach. And I went, wow, he's, he's right, because I was so invested in basketball, which was only a part of my life. But if I wanted to really thrive and flourish in all areas of my life, I was like, why am I not getting a coach for those? And thankfully, I made what, you know, looking back, I can see was a, a reckless and great decision at 17, that instead of buying a car, you know, my first car, I was going to start working with a coach and I'd deal with the car later. Um, and yeah, it was one of the scariest and most exciting things I ever did. And I'm very grateful for it every day. Absolutely. And then you went on. Now you are amongst the best coaches that, you know, um, are around, you know, our contemporary time. Congratulations for that. Now, what sort of results do people um, get when they come around and knock on your door at BU coaching there? What, what do they leave with so that people get an understanding of, you know, how you actually, you know, help your, your clients? So the biggest thing is increased emotional intelligence. Now, we talk a lot about IQ versus EQ, and everyone tends to know IQ because it's the standardized test on how smart you are. IQ actually can't change much throughout life. EQ is very changeable, which is quite cool. We've done these long-term studies to see which one can be developed more, and our emotional intelligence is a lot more able to be developed and grown over our lifespan. But more importantly, it's also a lot more closely correlated with fulfilling relationships, with career success, with financial success, with health. Like EQ is the tangible like leverage point that makes everything else grow and everything else better. So for us, the thing that we work on most with people is exactly that. They come to us for a result. And most people go, well, for a result, I have to change my behavior. Spot on. Because otherwise we do the same thing and expect a different result. It's insanity, right? So we do have to change the behavior. But the problem with stopping there is we're not asking, well, what's making the behavior in the first place? Because if we just try and change our behavior, we're just using willpower. And we've all done that before. We all do the, I'll start the new diet or the exercise plan and we get really excited and then a few weeks later we're off the bandwagon. Well, what happened there? Why did the behavior not stick? Well, it's because we didn't address the feeling and emotion behind the behavior. See, we as human beings, we're not logical driven creatures. We like to tell ourselves we are, but we're not driven by logic. We're driven by feeling and emotion. We don't do what we know we should do. We do what we feel like doing. So when we teach people how to change how they feel, in any given moment, like how to build confidence, how to build a sense of purpose, how to overcome self-doubt, stress, anxiety, those feelings that tend to hold us back, well, then they're able to make the behavior change long-lasting and then they get the result as the byproduct. So really everything we work on with people is changing the emotional state and empowering them to learn how to have the tools and strategies 
to change how they feel at any given moment. Absolutely. And what sort of modalities are people going to anticipate to, um, you know, to, to be exposed to if they're working with you? How do you work with people? Yeah, so we use a couple. Um, we draw a lot from three different fields. So NLP or Neuro Linguistic Programming, we look at the breakdown of the word neuro meaning brain, linguistic meaning language and programming going, what can we shift? Because what we know is uh, our language affects our psychology and our psychology affects our language. But the language is the one that's external. We can see it, we can hear it, we can play with it. And by changing things in that, we also change parts of our um, psychology, parts of our mindset, parts of our thinking patterns. So we use that as a very useful tool. Um, the other thing we tend to use is cognitive behavioral therapy, which is phenomenal in terms of working with anxiety, stress, and um, depression and self-doubt. Very powerful for helping people learn that their emotion and their feeling is not a part of them, which means they're able to step back and understand it and make changes to it. So that's very useful in the emotional intelligence space. Uh, and then the third one we use is positive psychology, which is a recent field, last 10, 15 years. Uh, basically, the head of the American Psychology Board, or one of the top guys, came out and said, we've been doing this wrong for 100 years. We've only focused on what's wrong with people and how to fix them. Why aren't we focusing on what's right with people and how to nurture that? So he went out and sought out the best performers, the happiest people, the people who are thriving in life and went, what are they doing that other people aren't? And he developed a whole school of thought, a whole area of psychology called positive psychology. And the analogy he uses is for the last hundred years, psychology has only been interested in removing the weeds. But if we just remove the weeds, all we have left is a bare patch of dirt. It's about time we planted some flowers. So we go in in positive psychology and go, what's inherently strong in you? What are you naturally great at? What makes you you? And how do we build upon that? So rather than taking you from negative five to zero or from like to normal, we go screw normal. Let's go from zero to plus a hundred. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's really interesting. Um, so all that we've ever known about um, life and the way to deal with people has been wrong. It's time to, uh, to search out for BU coaching so that you actually go on the straight and narrow of what's actually working at the moment. Now, if you've intrigued a couple of people and they're sitting at right at the edge of their seat there, Declan, um, what's the best way of people to get all of these modalities or how can people get a hold of you so that they too can be, do, and have a business that's profitable and enjoyable? Yeah, definitely. So in terms of accessing those modalities and getting started, obviously, you know, I'm a little bit biased, but I say the best bet is always working with a coach or mentor straight away. But I know that for some people that's not accessible straight away for whatever reason, financial time, whatever it may be. So you can always start with online courses. You know, we're lucky to offer a lot of BU coaching to help make it more accessible. Or I noticed the amazing collection of books you have behind you. Start with books. Um, you know, it's a great starting point as well. I'm fortunate enough now to be a published author. Quincy, I have one next to me. My book, right? Uh, it's a good way to get started just to grow. Obviously, if you can work with coaching, go straight away. So whether, you know, people watching this go, right, the best place for me to start is at a book or an online course or a seminar or working one-on-one -on -one with a coach, whatever it may be. Uh, if they do want to do that with us or they want to find out more about myself and my team and how we go about that and how we have fun with it, they can check out our website, www.bucoaching.org. Uh, there's a lot of awesome content on there and some useful free tools to get them started, like our online course, Five Steps to Meaningful Change. It's a free one we give away to get people moving. Uh, they can also check out our Facebook page just by searching BU, so just the letters BU Coaching on Facebook. We put up free content every week, like little videos and things to get people thinking about this differently and shifting their awareness and obviously, as we said, growing their emotional intelligence. So there's a couple of ways they can get in touch. If they wanted to get in touch directly, just email grow at bucoaching.org and one of our team will be able to help you out. Absolutely. Well, I can't thank you enough for your level of expertise um, you know, in the time that you showed us here on this show here, Declan. But you did mention earlier on that when people are striving to either <clears throat> change or instill certain habits in, you know, within themselves, it does take over maybe 21 days to instill habits and people give up way too soon. And if you yeah. would indulge me a little bit, you would notice that we are only just in the first quarter of 2018. That means a lot of people would have um, come up with um, 
a lot of people would have come up with, um, you know, New Year's resolutions, some of which are now sort of falling off the bandwagon and, you know, having not fulfilled any one of those. Now, in your, you know, coach's hat or coach's voice, what sort of advice can you give somebody to keep keeping on, um, you know, so that they do not give up on whatever it is that they have started or whatever it is they've declared that they wanted to do for themselves then? Mm, the most powerful one obviously the best thing is always you know, to give individual tailored advice and i wish i could do that for everyone watching um on the show i like to say i'm the expert on emotional intelligence and on human behavior but they're the expert on themselves so we have to work together but if i was to give one blanket rule and a rule of thumb for everyone it would be start exploring where you tie pain and pleasure at a basic biological level we are driven by where we perceive pain and pleasure to be. And I don't just mean physical pain. I mean, fear of failure, fear of rejection, fear of success. That's all pain points. And for a lot of people, when they set the new year's resolutions, if we were to really look at them, you know, critically, there's a lot of tired pain points there. You know, how many people say I'm going to lose weight this year, but the tired associations with that are, I'm going to have to quit eating the food I like. I'm going to have to give up my time to go to the gym and put myself through physical pain and an exercise that I don't enjoy. It's no wonder you're not lasting at it. There's only pain tied there. So the rule of thumb is if you can get three times as many uh, pleasure points as there are pain points, you'll take action. If you can get five times as many pleasure points, it'll be sustained action. So whatever their goal is, whatever they're planning on doing, start writing down your pain and pleasure points and make sure there's five times as many pleasure points. Absolutely. So as you've heard it from Declan, seek pleasure. And this is what actually makes a difference between the people that are actually flourishing and thriving in life. And um, as compared to those that are just simply getting by. And as you've noticed, Declan has an extensive past that he has now, um, you know, intertwined with the modalities that he's using and also evidence-based practices and also um, his authoring or the book that he's written there and his keynote speeches that he has put together to actually empower people like you and me to overcome their self-doubt, to cultivate their self-confidence and to actually live a life of purpose. Now, Declan, I cannot thank you enough for the true love that you've just dropped on this show, the expertise and also the time that you have afforded us so that we can be do and have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. Thank you so much. You're more than welcome. And honestly, thank you for having me on the show. I love having these opportunities to give back even more to more people. So thank you so much for the great work you do. It's incredible. Absolutely. Thank you, Sarah.